Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to describe how to use the comms air function to monitor the status of devices that are connected and are being pulled by the Redline HMI. So what I've done in this quick example is uh, over here in communications, I'll show you that I've got currently under protocol one, I've got the Redline HMI set up as a Modbus TCP master. And under here, I've got a number of Turk FEN20 products. If you've ever looked at those, they're really cool. You should check them out. Turk FEN20, Frank Edward Nancy 20. Anyway, underneath here, you can see I've got a number of devices. I've named them here, as you can see. And then if you look, the appropriate last octet right here of the, oc of the IP address is right here, matches the station number here. Also, notice as I go through, different stuff here. I'll pick back on the first one here. If you pick right here, uh, this one here being the Turk number 12, in Crimson, if you look up in this area right here, this part of the status bar, and also down here, you're going to see lots of stuff here uh, that's on the screen for information. And um, for instance, this number 12, if you look, it says device number 2 right here is what that happens to be. This one here is device three, so forth. Right in front of me, I've got uh, device number 52, this one, and I've got device number 51 right here in front of me. So what I've done here is I've made a few data tags over here in the left. I go to data tags, and in data tags, I basically have set up a bunch of words that are looking at output registers on each one of these so we can monitor and maybe change some things. And over here on display pages, this page one. Here's a let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. I've got I've drugged those words on the screen, and then the comms error that I'm talking about function is going to be in the lower right hand side of Crimson down here in the system section. Click on system and expand the variables tree, and you're going to see there is a comms error right here. This particular function here. Now normally you would do a right click and show help info but as you can see for some odd reason a red line doesn't have a help document on this one yet so someday they will so I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how this works today all I did is I drug this on the screen like so and I placed it here and I made it a little bigger so we can see it I've got the web browser up and running so let's go ahead and uh, just download this program to my current screen and if I open up the web browser right here this will show you the screen everything's connected right now the uh, bits that you see changing right here, if you've ever attended one of my classes, this is basically where we're putting an output to the node, the temperature. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. But if I disconnect, for instance, in this example, Turk number 52, I'll go ahead and disconnect this device right here. Look at right here, folks. Bit number 5 over here in the comms air shows up. Or 6 if you're decimal, but 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bit number 5 right here shows up. If I plug it back in, you'll see that it goes back to zero. If I disconnect, for instance, device number 51, let me go over here and show you the 51 again, right here. Device 51 is device number 12 right here. Okay, number 12. So let's go here and disconnect. Let's see here. This is, uh, this is number 9, 10, 11, 12. It could be this B. Let's see what happens here. We'll disconnect number 12. There it is. That bit right there, and of course this is in hexadecimal, but uh, is bit 11 here, or 5 here, and that's corresponding to, over here, this number here. So apparently it's minus 1 when we get to the comms error status. And, oops, let me go back to the screen. So if I plug that in, you'll see it uh, works correctly. So we're looking at here, uh, bit number 5, and it, this is bit number 11, if you do it in uh, hexadecimal here. Let's say, for instance, I want to make a flag bit that monitors that connection. So I'll go over here to data tags on the left. And this, uh, I'm going to click down here so it shows up in. I'll hit this little pole down right here to the right of the word new, and I'll choose a flag tag. And I'll call this one uh, status node, let's call this one node 52, for instance, node 52. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to use the comms air, but watch this trick. I'm going to go over to the right side, and I'm going to grab the comms air, but I'm just going to drag this guy out here right there. 
However, device number 52, let me go back to here. Device number 52 is right here. It says device 6, but it's actually going to be uh, bit number 5 in the comms here. So I'll go here, and if I want to monitor bit 5, I'll just double click here, at least where I get the cursor to go into this field, and I do a dot number 5, enter, and that's going to monitor bit number 5. Let's prove it first, guys. I'll go here to display pages. I'll just go over here to the right side. I'll drag this tag on the screen like so. Make it a little bigger. Do it like this so you guys can see it all here. There. Let's go ahead and download this and let's see what happens. Okay. So on my screen, here's the screen we're looking at right here. Watch what happens when I disconnect this device. Here I go. I'm going to disconnect it right here. Look, it says the on state here when this bit number 5 goes on, which is what I'm looking at here. If I plug the device back in, there it is. I plugged it right back. It goes right back to off. So if I go over here to that particular tag, and instead of having, say, the word on or off, you can go here to the format tag, tab, format tab, and you can say here off state, no, I'll say no errors, for instance. And I know when this one goes on, I know device 52, uh, I'll just call it lost, disconnected or something. Okay, go back here to this thing here, we'll click on this thing. Notice how it took it on the screen, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and download this change and see what happens. Let's go over here to the web browser. Here we have no errors, disconnected. Ooh, look, device 52 is lost. Notice the dash lines, the impervable comms error there. By the way, I'm showing it here as a decimal, and then I'm just showing the same thing as a binary number, 16-bit. You can go all the way up to 32-bit on here. So let me plug this back in. Let's try this one more time. This time, we're going to look at, let's make sure we're looking at bit number 11 on this guy. There we go. That's bit number 11 for node 51. So I'll plug it back in. Let's go over here to... Uh, data tags on this one. Let's go ahead and add another flag tag for this one. I'll call this one status node 51. I said that was going to be bit number 11, right? So I'll take comms error. Whoops. Go over here. Drag comms error right here. Drop it right there. At the end here, do a dot 11. Whoops. 11. Hit enter. Don't forget to always hit enter when you type on your keyboard. And then on the format here, I might in this one say, uh, this one I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to not have it do anything in the off state. I'll delete that completely. I'll put a space bar there. And then down here I'll say uh, node 51 lost. Alright, let's go over here to display pages. We'll drag this guy out here like this. We'll right click and do same size as this one. And we'll right click again and we'll do copy from all formatting. This guy... And let's try it. We'll save it here. I'll download it to the screen. I'm we'll go over to the web server so you guys can see this. I'll just click the home button to pull to the screen. There we go. And if I disconnect the number 52, you'll see it says device lost. I'll plug it back in. If I go to number 51, disconnect it. Node 51 lost. So, pretty cool little tool that you can use if you want to use the HMI as a master to monitor other things out in the field. Now if the HMI is a slave to something else, then this is not going to work because we have to be polling the connection. So if we're just a slave somewhere else, then we're not polling, we're just sitting there dormant. We have to be a master for this error to work, but the comms error you could use to monitor the status of devices out in the field. One other thing I'll point out to you that I did uh, to make things quicker for our demo when you normally add devices under the uh, Modbus, in this case, protocol, and others are different, but you're going to see a lot of times in our driver the connection timeout and the transaction timeout. Uh, normally these are anywhere from 3 to uh, 5,000 settings. Uh, three, uh, 5,000 milliseconds is 5 seconds, or 2,500 milliseconds is 2.5 seconds. So these are quite big. I've shortened them all to 100 milliseconds. That way, when I'm doing my testing, I'm not having to wait for a timeout window. I get almost an instantaneous error when I pull something out. It 
pops up right away. So uh, you might want to consider that in your uh, testing as well. Or you can leave it at the default and you'll see eventually after 5 to 10 seconds it'll time out and give you the fault. So that's just a quick demo on how to use the comms air function uh, to monitor devices uh, connections to the Redline HMIs. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you later, folks. Bye-bye.